Occupation Chamber do now adjourn. And I call the member for Braddon. I thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, members, uh, I don't think you'd be surprised to learn that Australia continues to have among the most stringent and effective environmental laws in the world. But the coalition government will not allow, we will not stand by and allow jobs and investment in our community uh, and the development and building of our economy to be threatened by activist litigation, which is also now known as lawfare. The question for Labor is, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, is does it stand for jobs and workers or not? This government knows where it stands. I'm not sure about those opposite. We know where we stand on jobs and growth uh, and development of infrastructure and resources in this country. But where does Labor stand, Madam Deputy Speaker? The Abbott Coalition government wants the highest environmental standards to apply. But here's the kicker. But once the tests have been applied, once approval has been given to projects to go ahead, courts should not should not be turned into a means of endlessly delaying vital national projects that are playing by the rules. Local jobs and projects will be protected uh, from vigilante litigants, Madam Deputy Speaker, by removing from the EPBC Act of 1999 the provision that allows radical activists to continually disrupt and sabotage important projects through the courts. Removing radical activists from the process will allow projects to stand on their own merits, as they should, while ensuring that they meet stringent environmental standards, some of the strongest environmental laws in the world. And this change will not affect any person legitimately affected by development. Let me say that again. This proposed change will not affect any person legitimately affected by development. They will still be able to challenge projects. But there is no place, there is no place for radical green activists to push their political agendas on the northwest and west coast communities of Tasmania or across the nation for that matter. This provision is what allowed Save the Tarkine in my electorate to challenge and delay, to challenge and delay and to challenge and delay both the Venture Minerals Project at Riley Creek and Shree Minerals Nelson Bay River Project. Delays in these projects have cost the Tasmanian economy millions of dollars and have cost or delayed hundreds of direct jobs and many more indirect jobs. And once again, it sends ongoing uh, negative messages to investors around the world. And I've had enough of it and my community have had enough of it and it's time to stand up and make the legislative changes that are required to remove these uh, radical activists uh, away from the process. These delays have cost jobs. They have affected families and communities. At a time when the mining sector is struggling, groups like Save the Tarkine engage in vigilante lawfare in an attempt to bludgeon projects and mining companies out of existence. They know they don't need to have money. They have inner city green law firms doing their work on, on the tick until the worldwide donations roll in. But we are their experiment. In Braddon, in Tasmania, we continue to be their experiment where they have no care. They are careless for the jobs, families and communities of the electorate of Braddon. They know that if they appeal decisions, it is unlikely they will need to pay any assurance. And if they do, it will be smaller than the total cost for the previous lost appeal. This is economic terrorism by judiciary. Let me say that again. This is economic terrorism by judiciary. Radical green activist groups are using the judiciary to wreak havoc on the very companies that provide much needed employment and investment in my beautiful state of Tasmania. They know, but they just don't care. Tasmania is, Tasmanians are well aware of these tactics, and unless the government takes action now, groups like Save the Tarkine and other green activist groups will not stop. There are no limits to their carelessness. There are a number of large pro proposed job creating projects in Tasmania that are in the sights of green groups. This government is proposing to take action now to prevent future economic terrorism. Very shortly, the Senate will welcome its newest senator, 
Nick McKim, a member of the Greens party and a person opposed to development in Tasmania. He has form. He was a minister in the worst performing government in Tasmania's history. But the pressure is on Labor senators, whether it be Senators Urquhart, Billick, Brown, Polly and Singh. They need, Madam Speaker, to stand up, back local jobs in Tasmania, back families and back Tasmanian communities. I thank the